Alright, time for another DrivePhysics.com video presentation. DebatePhysicsAlso.com But, no also in there. Uh, but nobody to debate, actually. Nobody will make a counter-argument in any kind of civil, respectable, scientific manner. Uh, so, this is just going to be the lever argument, redone again, and uh, just that's all the video is going to have in it, um, just to demonstrate that this one argument is solid, it hasn't been refuted in 350 years, and it frankly can't be, and it proves that momentum is energy, that mv squared was just a silly notion, and one half mv squared was a contrived pile of crap. <laughs> it has nothing to do with good physics or science or getting the, to the truth or um, even being fair. People just don't like being fair to the facts. So anyway, um, it's this simple. So the simplest mechanism just about, okay, one of the oldest tools in the human arsenal. So you have a fulcrum and a stick and you can move the center of the mass so to speak in any position by putting different masses on the lever so in this case we're going to put a two there <clears throat> and th that creates a certain amount of torque or movement in the lever and depending on what i put other places i could put a two here at the same distance uh, from the fulcrum and those two things will balance and the trick of the lever is is that i could put a one out here Okay, and, you know, get rid of the two, and the one and the two will balance perfectly. That is, this side of the lever can't really tell whether I put a two here or I put a one out here. The torque, the sense of how much pressure is being applied will be exactly the same. And I can kind of just convert that into a, <coughs> a gear, and, you know, it creates essentially the same kind of mechanism. I could put a two mass close in the you know one distance you know one measure of distance from the center um, or I can put a one out here and those two things if you were to turn to 12 o'clock if you were to turn the gear and I put a two on the small gear or a one on the outside gear you couldn't tell the difference even for a billion dollars you couldn't tell the difference um, <clears throat> the same amount of energy you'll be required to swing it to this location and the key is is that the distance is twice the distance for the one mass half that amount of distance for the two and <clears throat> that by momentum um, equals the same thing so all the lever is doing is it's changing it's converting one momentum into another momentum based on the fact that you change the mass so whatever mass you change it to, you put it in the correct location, and it'll be exactly the same momentum as the other side, and you'll be able to do a complete conversion. And this gets back to sort of Newton's cradle. Newton's cradle works because you're using same size masses. But if you use different size masses, Newton's cradle won't work because the masses can't make a clean conversion. The lever is essentially saying that I can have different masses at different velocities, and I can do a conversion between, okay, and transfer all of the energy. So I can transfer all of the energy on one side of the lever to the other side of the lever with a different mass. And that's the key to the whole thing. So the idea is this moves twice the distance that this moves in the same amount of time. So where the two and the two are equal distances, the one and the two outside further would be twice the distance and therefore twice the energy. So, in a sense, a lever becomes a free energy device by kinetic energy theory. By momentum theory, it's what it obviously is, is a very good converter of a, you know, long, slow di uh, movement into a fast, small movement and that kind of thing. And the same speed as the, the movements are the same speed, it's just more torque. Anyway, so if I were to turn, rotate the gear the one mass uh, further out will end up with twice the velocity. So it has 2x the velocity. All right, and one half the mass. Okay, so momentum works, but the kinetic energy theory says I have twice as much kinetic energy. Okay, so uh, 
Well, I guess I put, should have put a 2x on there. Twice as much in this object than this object. So even though they balance perfectly on the scale, any energy I put in will oscillate perfectly. Okay, with the 1 and the 2 out here, it will oscillate perfectly. You say same energy going down this way produces the same energy going up this way. Vice versa, the same energy going here up was the same energy going down here. Completely conservative using gravity to keep oscillating. <clears throat> so it um, works perfect as a momentum equation, but it doesn't work at all as a kinetic energy equation. Kinetic energy makes a mess of it. It says there's 100 joules of energy on this side and 200 joules of energy on this side. And if I used a one-third mass or one-quarter mass further and further out, I could have a differential of 400 to 100. So I could make more and more free energy by merely extending the lever. Now, theoretically, I could extend it 1,000 times, the difference between a gun, okay, <clears throat> shooting a bullet, and the bullet. So there's a 1,000 times difference in their mass if you put them a thousand times different on a lever, theoretically, if the lever weighed nothing and was inconsequential, you could launch the bullet on one side of the lever and launch the gun, throw the gun, okay, with the recoil velocity on the other side. Now, Newton's always said those two things are equal forces, okay, whatever goes that way, something else has to go this way. Um, those are the rules. The only way you can satisfy those rules is to recognize that, yes, it's only momentum. Momentum's all there is. There is no mv squared, and there is no one-half mv squared. That's all just made-up, fabulistic, fake energy. It doesn't have anything to do with the real world. The real world's just momentum. So, again, you can't make free energy because if you could make it, we'd have it. And you certainly can't make it this easy, okay, with a machine this simple, or just a gear, I just turn it. The device, I just turn it. And if I put a one mass on, I got free energy. Because we know if I put a two mass right here, we know that <laughs> you can't, let's it's like this example. We know if I put a two mass on this side, and there's a two mass on this side, and it perfectly balances, and then I oscillate it by putting energy in, we know the energy on this side is exactly the same as the energy on this side, and it's exactly the same as the amount of energy I put in originally. So I can't possibly get 200 joules out here. It's not like 100 joules of the energy was destroyed by the lever when I had the two mass here. So obviously when I put the one mass out here, I can't make an extra 100 joules of energy. Now, kinetic energy says they're there, but it's obvious they can't be there. It can't be real, okay? It's nothing, it's not real energy. It's just a fake notion of some idea that it's somehow more substantial because it looks more substantial. It goes four times higher. <clears throat> Lots of ways it'll look like it's more, but it's not more. The bullet looks like more than the gun. <clears throat> the gun recoil looks like less than the bullet, but looks like isn't is like. Okay, seems like isn't is like, and that's all illusion. Okay, that has nothing to do with physics or science or reality. So, in the year that I've been making this argument, there hasn't been a single counter argument in any form debunking any way anything I just said about levers and gears. So, it's really just there's no way around the argument, there's just evading. Well, I guess that's, that's the trick. There's a way around the argument. You just evade it. You avoid it. You don't deal with it. You don't face it. <laughs> and that's all they do, is they just keep ignoring the 350-year-old argument that kinetic energy, mv squared, vmv, okay, is fake physics. And the one-half is just... That was just extra fake they threw in in the 1800s. But for 350 years, it's been wrong. It's still wrong. It's wrong through all of those years, year after year after year, for 300 years. This wrong idea has been supported and defended, even though it can't pass a lever test. Fail. F. Big fail. Doesn't pass the a simplest tool a human can use. It doesn't pass that test, and yet people keep defending it.
defending it and defending it, and yet they can't make a single counter argument to explain how it's possible to have 200 joules here and 100 joules of energy on the other side of the lever. How that's possible for there to be balance, how there's possible for there to be consistent oscillation on both sides when you have 200 joules on one side and you only have 100 joules on the other. It's nonsense. It's a free energy. It makes a lever into a free energy device. It's obviously not a free energy device, so it would all have free energy. It obviously is bad theory, and there's just no good reason for anybody to defend it who has reasoning skills and cares anything about logic and cares anything about facts. So if you resist debunking this theory, this, this explanation of a lever, if you won't do that, and you'll keep arguing that kinetic energy is real, then you're just proving you have no integrity and you don't care about the truth. Because you have to get past this test. You have to change this fail into somehow an A plus or something. You somehow have to demonstrate how it's possible. I could have 100 joules of energy on one side of an oscillator and 200 joules on the other side of an oscillator. How is that possible? Yeah, I think that's enough. So... <clears throat> I posted this video, so I'll reference this whenever somebody needs the argument of the lever argument. So I'll title it the lever argument somewhere and uh, leave it at that. Uh, completely unrefuted, undisputed, unargued, uncountered argument. Nobody has said anything to explain how anything I just said in this video is wrong. Okay. And that'll do and such. So, till the next time, this has been a draftphysics.com video presentation.